Well, good morning, church. It's good to be together this morning in worship, and we are glad that you're here with us. In case there's anyone on here I haven't gotten a chance to meet, my name is Danny. I'm the pastor of, of MPC. And whether you're joining us here live on Zoom or whether you're tuning in later on through our YouTube channel, we are grateful uh, that you are here with us. You bless us with your presence here today. On behalf of our staff, I also want to wish everyone a happy new year, a happy 2021. It is good for us as the people of God uh, to begin this year with uh, in, in worship and in, and in praise uh, to God who, who loves us and who, who blesses us and then pronounces his favor over us. And uh, today we are gathering to recognize and celebrate the day of Epiphany, which is the day that is celebrated in the church on January the 6th, but we're celebrating it today on the first Sunday of of the year, and I'll say a little bit more about that later on uh, in the service. And now, uh, among uh, our, our blessings today as a family of faith is to be able to celebrate communion together today, which is our custom on the first Sunday of every month. Uh, so our tradition uh, has been uh, during the season of vir virtual worship, which is to provide our own elements, uh, something for the bread and something for the cup. Uh, so whatever you have on, on hand in your kitchen would work just fine. Uh, so if you want to take a moment now or sometime during the service to, to grab some communion elements for you and, and for, for your house or for your household, uh, you would be welcome, most welcome to do that. And uh, we've just come into a new year, obviously, so we're now looking at 20, 2021. So if you want to get a sense of what's coming up in the month of January, I didn't, I'd take you to our January announcer newsletter, which was sent out of the email a couple of days ago. And in there, you'll find some, some updates on what's coming up in the life of MPC. Uh, also, if you would like to worship God today through the giving of tithes and offerings, uh, we would invite you to do so through our website at moltpresschurch.org, or you can also give uh, through the mail by mailing checks to our church office. Uh, but now let's, uh, let's do what we came here to do. Uh, let's turn our attention uh, to the God who, uh, who loves us. Let's um, sing to the God who also sings over us, as it says in the book of Zephaniah. Friends, welcome to worship.
2021 doesn't turn into 2020 all over again. So help me put stickers on this thing. Okay? We need to get stickers on this to make it better. We gotta make all this stuff better. You wanted to put this Pikachu sticker on here because this wasn't good enough, right? We need to make this one better. No. Where's the Pikachu sticker no, no, no. go? No? It is good enough? It's on mine. On yours? Oh, okay, okay. But where should these stickers go on here to make this better? <laughs> Okay, but we're not gonna. You don't think this is gonna make 2021 better? All this stuff? That's not. No! Is how's 2021 gonna be better? Is it. If we put penguins on this, it'll make it better, right? It's not gonna be better. No. Penguins aren't gonna do it this time. It's okay. It's okay, Val. Listen, hey, I have an idea. Let's try something outside of the lab. Let's go on a field trip. Out of the lab? Yeah. Just to the front door. I don't leave the lab. I live here now. <laughs> okay, let's let's go to the front door. Okay. So here's what we're gonna do. There's no way to 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 do anything to make sure that 2021 is better than 2020. We just can't. 
But what we can do is remember that God is with us, right? Just like he was. God's with us just like he was in 2020, right? God's with us, right? He helped us, right? Silas, he helped us, right? You yeah. got a liver in 2020. You got a whole liver in 2020. Yeah. And he was with us even during the sad times. But yeah. we can do a blessing on our door. We can write 20 and then put a cross and a C and another cross and an M and another cross and a B plus or another cross 21. I don't know what that looks like an algebra what, what, equation. What, what, yeah, it yeah, says a, yeah. it looks like an algebra equation, but it's just a blessing on our house. It uh, stands for 2021, yeah, yeah, right? And okay. then the cross, because we remember that Jesus showed how much he loves us on the cross. C is for cross. Well, and then it's for Christ, Christus. That looks like it. It does. Mansionem, which means house in Latin. Okay. And benedictat, benedictat, oh, which means okay? a blessing. So we're just asking Jesus to bless our house. And you know what? This doesn't mean that Jesus won't bless our house if we don't do this, but it's a reminder to us, right? Yeah. That Jesus yeah. is with us. And he, is, he has been blessing us all through 2020, and he'll bless us in 2021, even if things get hard. And they're still going to be hard for at least a few months, right? Oh, yeah. But yeah, this okay. is just a, yeah. it's just a good reminder for us that Jesus is with us. <laughs> okay. So 2021, even if there's bad parts, it's still going to be okay, right? Okay, okay. Silas, back to the lab. Okay. Oh, yeah. That is bad. Yeah. 2021, it's going to be okay. Let's get to start off 2021 in Val's lab. Thank you to Val, Heather, and Silas. And now as we continue to engage with the, the word of God, let's, uh, let's join our hearts together in, in prayer and, and ask that, uh, that the Lord would reveal himself to us in this time. Let's pray. God, we are grateful uh, that you have made a way, God, that you have made a way for us to be gathered together today. It, it is a sign of your goodness, a sign of your grace and faithfulness that we're able to, to worship together, albeit from a distance. And God, I, I ask, Lord, that you would do what only you can, which is indwell this reading, this time in your word, and that, that you would breathe life into these ancient words, that you would bring these um, ancient words and bring them to life to have them speak to us in the present. So God, that our future might be different. We pray it all, Lord, in the strong and powerful name of Jesus, our Lord who loves us. Amen. So this is the new year. You know, over the past several months, I've heard the sentiment more times than I can count. I can't wait for 2020 to be over, right? Won't it be nice when we can finally put this year behind us? You know, I have to say that, that New Year's out of all of the holidays that we have on our calendar tends to be, I think the most anticlimactic of them all. Right, because we begin this new year with a ball drop and confetti with hope and expectation. But the fact is that when we enter a new year, nothing really changes except for a, a number on, on a piece of paper. And, and I don't mean to sound, sound cynical here because I have hopes and dreams for this year, as I'm sure you do as well. Uh, but what I'm saying is that if we pin our hopes to, to a new year, then we will certainly be disappointed. I would say that in general, the new year just, just doesn't live up to the hype. And now this is why I love that, that as the church, we begin the year with the day of epiphany. 
Now, Epiphany doesn't tend to get a lot of attention or hype, but in, in my house, I'm always adamant that our Christmas decorations stay up until January 6th, until Epiphany, because Christmas really isn't over until then. No judgment if you already took yours down. It's okay. I realize I'm kind of a nerd about this stuff, but, but as we begin a, a new year together, something tells me that we really need the day of Epiphany, because unlike New Year's, Epiphany lives up to the hype. It doesn't disappoint because Jesus doesn't disappoint. You know, on the day of Epiphany, the church remembers the story of the Magi, the wise men who, who followed a star that, that led them to Jesus. And we don't know exactly who these wise men were or where they came from, but we do know this. We, we know that in Matthew 2, it says that, that, that the Magi came into the house where Jesus was. And they saw him there with his mother Mary, and, and it says that they bowed down and, and they worshipped him. You see, the Magi, after their long journey from God knows where, when they saw Jesus, there was no disappointment. There was no let, let down. Jesus lived up to the hype. And so much so that they presented him with gold and, and frankincense and myrrh, gifts that were fit for a king. So church, we need this day. Because this day doesn't disappoint. Epiphany lives up to the hype. And this morning, instead of looking to the story of the, the wise men, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the book of Isaiah, chapters 59 and 60. Now, the book of Isaiah is a really lengthy book. There's a lot going on in Isaiah. It's 66 chapters all together, now it, but it is so rich and so beautiful. Author Eugene Peterson calls the book of Isaiah God's symphony of salvation, which I think is a wonderful way of describing the book of Isaiah. And I'm going to put up a slide here on the, here on the screen uh, that will, you know, help us orient, that will help orient us to the, the book of Isaiah. So here, here it is. The interesting thing about Isaiah, you see, is that it's actually three books in one. You see, in Isaiah, we have prophecies that were spoken to Israel at three different points in, in history. And I won't go into all of these in detail because really that would be a sermon unto itself. But right around 600 BC, the Babylonian Empire seized control of Jerusalem and destroyed the temple of the Lord. And, and many of the Jews were carried off into exile in Babylon where they lived as strangers in a foreign land. And in just a moment, we're going to look at some scripture from Isaiah 59 and 60. And as you can see there on the slide, this prophecy took place after the, the exile. Once the Jews were given permission to return home, which some of them did and some of them remained scattered across the region. Uh, but here we're going to take a look at, um, at a passage. This is Isaiah 59, starting in verse 9. So I invite you to hear uh, God's word. Isaiah writes, so justice is far from us, and righteousness does not reach us. We look for light, but all is darkness. For brightness, but we walk in deep shadows. Like the blind, we grope along the wall, feeling our way like people without eyes. At mid day we stumble as if it were twilight among the strong we are like the dead we all growl like bears we moan mournfully like doves we look for justice but find none for deliverance but it is far away you see at this point in time god's people felt lost and completely disoriented 
They had lost so much, so much had been stripped away. Israel had lost the ability to, to worship as they once did. They, they wondered what kind of a future they would have. And at this point, they're, they're facing the reality that things may never go back to how they were before. It all sounds familiar, doesn't it? But let's keep reading. I want to go on to chapter 60. Um, so I invite you to hear uh, these words of hope and assurance from the 60th chapter, verses 1 through 6. Isaiah writes, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the people's but the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar and your daughters are carried on the hip. And then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To you, the riches of the nations will come. Herds of camels will cover your land. Young camels of Midian and Ephah and all from Sheba will come, bearing gold and incense and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. So friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You see, I love that, that passage. And th this word from Isaiah 60, it, it really does two things for us. It gives us hope, and it also gives us purpose. This prophecy gives us hope, and it gives us purpose. You see, in particular, there is so much power and significance in verse 2. And here's what it says. Darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the people. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. You see, this, this passage is saying, yes, there, there is darkness, but God. You see, those two words are, are really a, a very good summary of the gospel, but God. These words give us assurance, they give us hope, and we see this over and over again throughout the narrative of scripture. In Genesis 50, there's the story of Joseph who was disowned and left for dead by his brothers, and he says to them in that chapter, he says, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. In 1 Samuel 23, when King David is running for his life, it says this. It says, day after day, King Saul searched for him, but God did not deliver David into his hands. Psalm 73, my spirit may grow weak, but God is the strength of my heart. Romans 5, but God demonstrated his love for us in this way, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In Acts chapter 3, you killed the author of life, but God raised him to life. See, those two words are, in fact, the gospel. Do you see the power? Do you see the significance of those two words? You see, Isaiah doesn't try to, to gloss over the darkness of this world, but rather he names it. Right? He says, yes, darkness covers the earth. Thick darkness is over the people, but God. Those two words are the gospel. And friends, we have been through so much in these past several months. And yes, this pandemic continues to, to devastate our world, our nation, our community, but God. And yes, we continue to deal with the, the painful realities of, of isolation and grief, but God. 
And yes, there, there is injustice and there is violence and there is oppression. But God. And yes, as we step into the year that is 2021, it still feels as though we're peering into a, a black hole of uncertainty. But God. You see, there is hope in him. There is hope in Jesus, even when the darkness is surrounding us, even when the world is falling apart around us, no matter what tomorrow might bring, there is hope because of those two words. Those words are trustworthy and true. Darkness covers the land. Thick darkness is over the peoples. But God. Those two words give us hope. Those two words give us assurance. This passage, Isaiah 60, gives us hope and it gives us purpose. Because here in this text, there is a command that is directed to the, to the people of God. And that command is right there in verse one. The people are commanded to rise and shine. And no, it's not in reference to, uh, to getting up in the morning. You see, the Lord sees, the Lord acknowledges the darkness that covers his people, but at the same time, he appeals to them, right? He appeals to them, don't let it stop you from doing what I've called you to do. Don't let your circumstances stop you from being who I have called you to be. You see, even in a moment of great uncertainty and great trial, God would not allow Israel to forget that their purpose was to be a light to the nations. That in fact, they were blessed to, to be a blessing, Genesis 12. That God doesn't just give his people hope, but he gives them purpose. God gives us purpose. And our purpose is to rise and shine. One commentator puts it this way. I, I love this. Of, of this command, rise and shine. She said, this is not an invitation, but rather it is a command. That the light has not come merely to, to rescue a chosen few from darkness. But the light has come so that others will be drawn out of darkness and into the circle of light. That those who are privileged to stand in the light have a responsibility not just to receive it, but also to respond to it. To rise and shine with the light of Jesus. That is our calling. That is our purpose. It's who we were created to be. And you know, we are stepping into this new year with a profound awareness of how broken, how unpredictable, how unstable this world is. And we wonder, we, we ask, this year, are, are things going to change? Are, are things going to get better? Will this year be different? And like I said, these are there are questions that maybe we can't help but ask right now, but I can't help but wonder if there are better questions for us to consider as we step into 2021. That instead of asking how this year will be different, a far better question would be to ask how, how will we be different? That instead of asking when things will change, a better question will be, how will our lives change? Or better yet, will we allow the Lord to change our hearts and our lives? And today, as we look to the day of Epiphany, I wanted to invite us into a very practical way of asking these questions. Uh, today, we are going to be joining countless other churches in a spiritual practice called Star Words. 
And I, I, I think that MPC has done this before, but, um, but if, in case you're not familiar with the, with the tradition, let me offer a quick explanation. Each of you will be receiving a, a star with a, a particular word written on it. If we were worshiping in person, you would be invited to grab one on the communion table um, during communion. But since we're virtual, well, we're going to be mailing to you, mailing these to you this week. And I believe they're in the mail as we speak. And if you don't receive one for, for any reason and would like one, let the office know and we will send one over to you. And like I said, each star has a, a word on it that a word on it that might provide you with insight and with direction and guidance and inspiration for the coming year. Or perhaps this word will compel you to, to look at things in a new way. So what we'd invite you to do is take your star when you receive it. This one has the word, uh, the word abundance on it. Uh, but take your star and, and put it up somewhere in your, in your home where you'll see it every single day. And pray and reflect on that word and allow it to, to guide you into this year. And you just might be surprised at how the Holy Spirit speaks to you just through, through one simple word. You know, a couple of weeks ago, um, you may have seen that the, the Christmas star was visible in the sky, although it wasn't really a star, it was a conjunction of planets of Jupiter and Saturn. And on the, the 21st, I, I, have, I was sitting with my family at the dinner table and, and I mentioned to my wife, I said, hey, you know, isn't tonight, you know, the, uh, the Christmas star night when you're supposed to be able to see this big star, this big conjunction of planets. And she said, yeah, I think that's tonight. And I, and I made a mental note of it. And I had every intention uh, of going outside to, to look. And although I don't even know if you can see it um, from the Pacific Northwest, but, but really on that day, on that night, I, I, I completely forgot about it. And this got me thinking, how often do we forget to look? How often do we forget to look for what God might be doing in our lives? That how often do we choose to stay where we are instead of opening ourselves to God's leading and transformation in our lives? So this is what the, the star words are all about, to help us bring um, purpose and intention to our living. So church, may this be a year. May this be a year wherein we open ourselves to the Lord. Let us open ourselves to the one who gives us hope. The one who gives us purpose. Let this be a year where we hear, receive, and respond to the command of God, his command to rise and shine. To God our Father, be the glory forever. Amen. Strings of glory blend with radiance so bright, and herald angels sing the story of delights to welcome Jesus to the world. In him, the light of life has gone for those in dark. God's salvation has been born, and through his suffering he'll comfort all who mourn, with hope that rises from despair, Christ is born, earth and heaven bow to worship him, Christ is born, Your hearts to welcome.
Welcome Christ the King. Welcome Christ the King. We welcome Christ the By virgin birth, the second Adam born to lift us from the curse, restoring righteousness in him. Christ is born, earth and heaven bow to worship him. Christ is born. this is the joyful feast of the people of God. And if you haven't gotten a chance to, to do so, if you'd like to head into your kitchen and grab some elements, you are welcome to do so at this point. And we, we know from scripture the, the character of, of God and his son, Jesus Christ. We see that no one is turned away at his table. And in fact, this table is not for those who have it all together. It's for those who are broken, for those who feel unworthy. So if you feel that way, this table is for you. If you long for this spiritual food, this table is for you. If you have questions and doubts, this table is for you. If you long to, to encounter the Lord Jesus Christ, this table is for you. This table is spread for all of us so that we might know the love and, and the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. So with that, that hope and with that confidence, let's join together. Let's join our hearts together in prayer. Holy God, this table is a sign of your faithfulness and love for us, your love that is so perfectly demonstrated in the person of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We praise you for doing for us what we could not do for ourselves. Thank you for being a savior for us when we were deserving of condemnation. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for being Emmanuel. Thank you for being with us. And Lord, we enter this, uh, this new year 
with with hopes with with dreams with expectations God, we're wondering what the future might hold and we we acknowledge god that we may need to let go of some of these things and we ask that you would give us the faith and give us the courage to do so help us to to bend our thoughts to your thoughts and our will to your will like the Magi that followed a star, give us the faith and the courage to, to seek you above, above everything else. God, let us follow the light in, in a world that is just cloaked in darkness. God, we do pray today for all those this day who find themselves in, in the thick darkness of, of pain and suffering, isolation and grief and justice and oppression. God, we lift up petitions for, for those in our world who have never heard of you, and we, we pray for revelation. God, as we come to your table, we, we ask that you would do what only you can. God, bring joy and sorrow, bring light and darkness, bring life to dead places. And even now, in this moment, God, bring light to our present darkness. Help us to die where we need to die. Give us life where we need life. We trust in you, Jesus. We now join our hearts and our voices together in the prayer that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, our Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed and arrested, gathered with his disciples in an upper room and he took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, take this and eat it and do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper was over, Jesus took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do it and remember me. For church, whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we remember the saving death of our Lord Jesus Christ until he comes again and he will, he will come again in a new and, and glorious way. So at this point, I'd, I'd invite you to take your bread or whatever you happen to be using. And as we take it together, we remember the words of Jesus, who said, I am the bread of life. And that whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never first, will never thirst. Friends, this is the body of Christ broken for you. Now I'd invite you to, to now take your cup. As we take it together, we remember that Jesus is the true vine. And if we abide in him, then we will bear much fruit. Friends, this is the blood of Christ shed for you because he loves you. Amen. Let's pray together. 
Oh God, your love for us is, is extravagant. It's beyond measure. Got to think that, that you were all powerful and you had everything and yet you emptied yourself and became nothing for our sake. God, we thank you for, for feeding us today with your, with your word and now at your table. Thank you, God, for your faithfulness to us. Thank you for being with us, Lord. And help us not only to receive your good news today, but help us to respond. Help us to be faithful and obedient to your calling to rise and to shine. Show us ways, God, that we can be a light in this world. Show us ways that we can reflect the, the glorious and everlasting light of Jesus. It's in his name that we pray, Father. Amen.
Amen. And many thanks to our praise team for those wonderful uh, music selections today uh, to help us uh, celebrate the, the wonderful day in the life of the church that is the day of Epiphany. Uh, following this closing blessing in a few moments, we will open our breakout rooms and you are more than welcome to join one of those if you'd like to pop in and say hello to some other folks in the MPC family. We would love to see you. You're certainly welcome to, to join us. All are welcome. And now, friends, as we close our service, friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace this day and forevermore. And let all God's people say, amen.